Welcome to my channel. My name is Irvin, also known as Kobu Man. What we have here is an Elite Book 8470P by HP. Probably one of the easiest laptops to upgrade your CPU on. So let's get to that. Let me show you how it's done. So for this procedure, we're going to need a couple of different screwdrivers. One Phillips head and one flat head. Once we have our laptop turned upside down, we need to remove the battery first. In order to do that, we need to unlock it first. As you can see here, it says that we have to move this little tab over to unlock it. You may need a little bit of force, but you have to make sure it stays red, and then you pull out the battery like so. Now we need to remove the bottom plastic cover that is preventing us from accessing anything down here. And I promise you after that, we'll be able to have really easy access. For this, we just need to move the other lever that's right next to it, put it into the unlocked position, and then just pull towards yourself like this, just slightly. We know it's already unlocked, and from there we just have to lift it up and just move it aside. And just like in my previous video on how to upgrade some of the basic stuff, which I will put a link to right here, this is a little bit more advanced. So if you're not 100% sure that you are comfortable with removing a CPU and replacing it, then by all, by all means don't do it. However, this laptop is super easy to do and if you have any basic experience when it comes to replacing or upgrading CPUs or creating your desktops, you definitely can do this because it's not very difficult at all. So looking at it here, logically speaking, we know what to look for when it comes to CPU. We can see that there is a copper backplate which is right here. It's not copper color obviously because it's been painted but this is definitely the copper cover that we need to access to. So the CPU is literally right here. For us to actually get to that we need to remove this little fan and it's only two screws, one there and one there. So let's get to that. And of course for this you will need the Phillips head screwdriver. And these have a spring on them so these screws do not fall out at all so you don't have to worry about that. Same thing with this other one. Now our fan is free. Now we have to just pull it out. For this to happen, we have to kind of lift on this back of it a little bit here because it's stuck underneath here. The, the, you'll see the part of the fan that goes in here, it's kind of stuck underneath it. So we have to lift up this back part of it first. Just don't pull too hard because these little cables that power the fan are pretty thin and we don't want to rip them out or you know make them lose connection so we're just going to slightly lift this up from the back <clears throat> like so and then now we're just going to pull this way to disconnect the fan you see that was pretty simple but you can see how about this much here was being held underneath this plastic cover this is why we needed to kind of make a little bit more space to get that going from here we can disconnect the fan if we want to but we're just going to leave it aside here to make it a little simple and that's all we needed to do really uh, <clears throat> the main reason for removing this fan is so that whenever we remove this copper plate we have to remove the heat sink at the same time which is right there you can see it's actually right there so now that we have removed the fan we can start to remove this copper plate of course we're going to use the same type of screwdriver which is the Phillips head and we got one two three four screws only and they're same type as this here where they don't fall out so they have a little spring action there so you don't have to worry about losing them and then just unscrew them until you feel them pop out and you know I've done a few of these before and I haven't done it on this computer yet removing of the, of the back plate here or the copper plate for the heatsink but a lot of times uh, once I remove this the thermal paste that's underneath has been applied like as if it was applied by amateurs 
which is kind of unfortunate. But you will we'll see what happens with this one. Okay. The black play, back plate is now loose. Now we have to just kind of slide it out from there and kind of pull it this way a little bit, but we have to lift it up first. So we're just going to lift gently. Make sure all your screws are loose. Sometimes mine are. And then we're just going to slide it like that, gently. Now we can see this is our little heat sink. And now we just simply take it out. This one actually doesn't look too bad, so the application of thermal paste here is not bad. So whenever you install a new CPU, make sure you roughly apply the same amount. Try not to go past the little rectangle, uh, rectangle there. So now that we have this out of the way, we can access our CPU here. And for that, we're going to need the flat head. And the way you do that is you put your screwdriver here and then you turn it counterclockwise, right? So not clockwise, but counterclockwise. And this lever will unlock the CPU and it will just pop out. Here we go. Insert it there. I hope you can see it. Then we're going to turn it clock counterclockwise like so. And you probably heard it, maybe even seen it pop out. And now we can gently lift it up. You can do so with your hands, with your bare hands. Just be careful so you don't bend any pins that are underneath. And then we can gently lift up our CPU. And for this specific laptop, again, this is 8470P Elite Book. It might be similar on yours if you have an 8460 or something like that. Just make sure you get the proper CPU upgrade. For this specific one, this is an i5. I will put a link in the description box below for the specific CPU that goes with this. So when you buy that one, you will know it goes in, into this socket, right? So it's going to be i7. All right, the way you put it back in, so you have your new CPU now, make sure your marks are aligned properly. And the way you can tell that is that you see how the little marks are pointing up. They're always going to point towards the locking mechanism here. Sometimes they don't show that here, but you can see there's a mark right here to help you orient to that. You see, there's a little mark there. That means it's up. That means we need to turn it this way, right? And then just insert it back in. You see the little mark there? It's kind of hard to see. I hope you guys can see it. And I'll do extra zoom in so you guys can see and make sure it's aligned to that, to this little mark here. And then same way to put it back in, you just gently drop it in. So far it's very simple. As long as you don't force nothing, it's okay if you just let it drop in. It's not that sensitive. Now we know we can just kind of touch it with your finger a little bit. Make sure it's in there. You know what I mean? Make sure it's in there. It's, it's, it fell into the slot, all that. And to lock it back in, we're going to current, turn this clockwise. So we have to make sure that this end of this, this little, little uh, marker here, points that way. So we're going to do that. We're going to turn it clockwise. Like so. And there you go. Now that's fully secure in there, as you can see. It's fully secure. Our CPU is installed. Very simple, guys. Very, very simple. So this is why I say this is one of the simplest ones to do. I mean, the other ones are also simple, but a lot of times you have to remove a lot of stuff in order to get to this part of it. This is one of the most simple laptops I've seen that you can upgrade. And especially nowadays, this laptop is, you know, four to five years old. And now is a good time to upgrade to, a, to an i7. If you have an i3 or i5 installed in one of these type of laptops. So, in order to put this back in, we're just going to do it in reverse order. We just have to kind of lower it in. Just take your time and make sure this little edge here just kind of goes into this part of it first. 
this is the tricky part here when it comes to putting this back in make sure it kind of goes underneath that like so then that will make it easier to put the heat sink back in you see how it's now sliding back in its place now don't lower don't lower this plate down until you positioned your heat sink properly and aligned the uh, holes the screw holes for this here you see that right there make sure it slides all the way down all the way that way and then just lower it lower it on top of the CPU put your screws back on just tighten them go, go crosswise tighten this one and then that one not all the way down just tighten it slightly and you don't need a lot of force you can go first do this that and then that and then that you can do it in any other order just make sure you do it in cross sec cross sections that one is a little bit tight that one okay and then I'm gonna do this one keep in mind I did not tighten this one all the way not yet you don't need a lot of pressure on those anyways same this cross crossways and I'm gonna go back over here and tighten this see now it's that's that's good enough you don't have to go any crazier than that retighten we need to put our fan back on and again if you remember we know that this part of it here actually inserts first in because we lifted this back on the end of it first and then we're just going to lower that in hold the back of it up a little bit let it let its uh, rear kind of stick up and from there you just make sure it's inserted in where the heat sink is which it is right now and then just then we can lower it back down like that and then we're going to tighten our screws ever so slightly order in this doesn't really matter we just have to make sure it's tightened none of this has to be a lot of force you don't need a lot of force on any of this stuff and we're done with our CPU install last thing we gotta do is put our plate back on just kinda lower it down like this remember how it stuck out then we're just gonna push it forward like that and then we're gonna lock it lock it in put our battery back in and make sure it's locked and there you have it guys I hope you enjoyed this video if you like it share it with your friends don't forget to check out the link to the proper CPU you need for this in the link in the description box below thank you so much for watching have a good day bye bye and if you have any questions feel free to ask I will be more than happy to answer that's the most important thing about this video if you need help I'm here to help you so ask me questions. All right, guys. Have a good one. Bye-bye.